Got any plans tomorrow, Lucy? Nothing special, why? Because your clever little flatmate has managed to wangle two VIP guest tickets to Wimbledon. Oh my god, the tennis! The dogs. <laughs> Come on, it'd be a laugh. Where else should you get to lose a few hundred quid and shout abuse at a main jail whippet? Every month when you rent stew. <laughs> Look, Lee, it's very kind of you, but it's not my sort of thing. What is it? Me or the dog racing? What? Nothing, forget it. Drop me off here, I'll walk that. Oh, don't be ridiculous, we're miles away. Well, I need the exercise. I'm in trap six tomorrow and those wide bends are always tricky. <laughs> we leave the car here, we can walk back together. I'm fine, thanks, Lucy. I'm a big boy now. I don't need someone holding me hand when I cross the road. <laughs> Ow. Either I'm at home or God shops at Ikea. Oh, thank God you're awake. What's happened? You've had a severe head injury. You were hit by a car. What was the reg? I don't know. Lucy, where there's blame, there's a claim. Carol Vorderman doesn't say these things for fun, you know. <laughs> Why am I dressed like a 1960s transvestite? <laughs> Lucy! What's going on? Why am I not in hospital? I told the doctors I wanted to take care of you, so I discharged you. But you're not qualified. Well, who would you rather have treating you? Someone who may have a framed medical certificate hanging from his wall, but who doesn't know you? Or someone who might not have the medical background, but who does know you? And not only likes you, cares about you. Really cares about you. Definitely the first one. <laughs> It's a severe head injury, Lucy. It's not a splinter. You can't just pull it out with your teeth and then rinse your mouth out with a large glass of gin. That's not what you do for a splinter. I always thought Mum was being swayed by the gin. I'm going to take care of you, Lee. And then we're going dog racing. I'm even going to buy you your own greyhound. And we'll watch it race while eating pie and peas and sipping a pint of bitter under the moonlight. It's like watching a Yorkshire remake of Gone with the Wind. <laughs> Take me. Now. Do you mean sex or dog racing? <laughs> you know what I mean. I want you to make love to me right here, right now. No buts. I wouldn't dream of asking for that. <laughs> oh, I see. I get it. What? This. It's a dream, isn't it? What makes you say that? Because I don't remember asking my dad to come over and stand in the corner dressed as my mum. <laughs> All right, son. I reckon you're in there. <laughs> Bloody hell. What are you worrying? You look ridiculous. <laughs> OK, Lee, none of this is real. It's a dream. You're actually lying in a hospital bed in a coma. We're all there, me, Tim, Daisy. Although I don't think Daisy's fully grasped the enormity of the situation. She's brought you a jigsaw. <laughs> and the doctor's just been in to see us. It's not good news. He says you might not make it. Not the jigsaw. <laughs> he says you might not pull through. Lee? Lee, can you hear me? Lee, it's Lucy. I need to know if you can hear me. Can you hear me, Lee? Lee, can you hear me? Yes, I can bloody hear you. I'm in shock. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Lee, can you hear me? Lee, it's Lucy. Can you hear me? It's no use, Lucy. He doesn't know we're here. All we can do now is pray that he eventually wakes up. Would you say this bit is a piece of cloud or some spilt milk? <laughs> We've got more important things to worry about at the moment, Daisy. You should always start with the four corners. The doctor said he might never fully recover. He might need round-the-clock care. That's well, a good job he's got us as friends, isn't it? 
I'll always be there for him, Lucy, whatever. Talking to him, feeding him, mopping his brow. He said he might not even be able to go to the toilet on his own. Wake up, Lee, for God's sake. <laughs> I wonder what he's dreaming about. I don't even want to think about it. Trapped inside his own mind like a prison. God only knows what kind of hellish time he's having in there. Just give it to me, big boy. <laughs> and then afterwards, I'll make you a lovely fry-up. <laughs> or I could go and buy you some of your favourite chocolate. I quite fancy a nibble on a fun-sized Mars bar. <laughs> it's like being in carry-on up the coma. <laughs> I wouldn't complain, son. Dad. You go home and put some proper clothes on, standing there in mum's dress with your big hairy moustache and beer belly. It's like looking at. Well, it's like looking at mum, actually. <laughs> oh, fuck. Look, Lee, we may never get another opportunity like this. You might wake up soon and then we're back to how it always is. What does that mean? You know exactly what I mean. Me and you sharing a flat, with me constantly looking at you with adoring eyes, but. Knowing you're unobtainable because you're too mysterious, too enigmatic, too good-looking for a simple girl like me to... Blimey, this really is your dream, isn't it? <laughs> Make love to me, Lee. I need time to think about this, Lucy. It doesn't feel right taking advantage of you like this. Having said that, I don't suppose that fry up still. No. <laughs> So, how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks, yeah. I mean, I've been feeling a bit under the weather for the last couple of days, but not bad considering I'm in a bloody coma. <laughs> You'll be fine, you hypochondriac. I know what you're like, it won't be a real coma. It'll be a man coma. <laughs> it's not me that goes to accident and emergency when I don't need to. That drawing pin went in very deep, actually. <laughs> anyway, stop panicking. You may be lying in bed all day in a near vegetative state, but before you know it, you'll be back to your old self. Lying in bed all day in a near vegetative state. Why are you being like this? Like what? This. All unbothered and casual. This isn't my doing. It's your dream. But whether you like it or not, we're actually really close, you and me. You're the best friend I've ever had. And I don't want any harm coming to you. You know your sister wants to have sex with me. Lay a finger on her and I'll punch your lights out. <laughs> if only I'd said yes to what he wanted. He never would have got out of the car. Well, what was he asking you to do? He asked me to go dog racing. What, like on a date? I'd hardly call dog racing a date. Where he's from, it's virtually an offer of marriage. <laughs> <sighs> Can't find the four corners. <laughs> I can't believe you, Tim. Your best friend is lying in a coma and all you care about is whether he's been asking me out or not. You're right. I'm sorry, Lee. I know I've always given you a hard time when it comes to you and Lucy. But if you wake up, I promise you can take her anywhere you like. I'll even let you walk through Kew Gardens hand in hand. And you can woo her in the new exotic plant life exhibition. It's like being pimped by Alan Titchmarsh. <laughs> Please wake up, Lee. Lee, it's Tim. Can you hear me? Lee, can you hear me? What? I just said I'd give you permission to sleep with Lucy. I can't do that. Why not? She's a very good-looking girl, my sister. She's got Dad's powerful nose and my Romanesque jawline. I'll bear that in mind when we're doing it. <laughs> I'll certainly make it last longer. <laughs> Go on, Lee. I mean it. Knock yourself out. Sorry. <laughs> Are you sure it's morally the right thing to do? Absolutely. And maybe you could, uh, you know, return the favour? How? Well, let's just say, if in this dream of yours I get back to my flat and Margaret from The Apprentice tells me I'm a naughty little boy, <laughs> I'd take my punishment like a man. <laughs> Deal. Although he's in for a shot when she turns into Alan's sugar. 